Hi, this is Chandler Rose, and today I'm going to show you my Fountain of Youth face massage. This is very good for maintaining tone and elasticity in your face. It's also really great for your skin. I'm also going to address some trigger points that cause tension in the face, head, and neck. Let's get started. So ideally, someone else can work on you, but these techniques can also be applied to yourself. So please follow along. You can do a lot of these techniques on your own face and neck to help create more elasticity and tone. So I have lovely Lucy here on a yoga mat. You can also use a massage table. I like to create a very relaxing space. So the reason why I felt it was important to do a video for the Fountain of Youth is that when I do massages, a lot of times my clients will say that they feel and look younger after the massage is over. And to me that makes sense, of course, because when you've had an hour or more of relaxation time, kind of like taking a nap, getting some rest. But there are so many other things going on when you're getting a massage. For instance, massage really helps with collagen production. It also helps with repairing the skin and muscle structures. So anytime you see a disturbance in the skin or you feel a disturbance in the muscles, aches or pains, massage actually goes in and me mechanically helps repair these cells. So the intention is to use massage to nourish the skin and the structures beneath it. And the benefit is that your muscles get this work this stretch, this sort of toning, and you don't have to do anything while you're getting this treatment, unless you're working on yourself. And in that case, it's also beneficial for the structures that you're working on. So I have a lovely handmade blend of oils with me today. And this is a small molecule oil, great for the face and great for the neck and decollete, which can be a very sensitive area. And I'm just gonna start by applying a very generous coating of this lovely nourishing massage oil that acts as a protectant for the cells and also a moisturizer, which can also help with the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. So when I learned face massage, I learned that it's important to work up. You really want to bring blood up and work against gravity, pulling us down. And so a lot of these techniques, you're gonna see my hands or fingers raking upwards towards the face, where you're bringing all this new circulation. I also find that working deeper with any trigger point therapy can also really give the face and neck the fountain of youth because you're releasing these really tense muscles that oftentimes are tightened because of stress or because of focus or because of concentration on getting a task done. 
And then when you go in and mechanically release these muscles, the face has a new appearance of feeling more refreshed, feeling more awake, feeling more vital, feeling more full of energy. So now I am going to hold some occipital points in the back of the neck. The occipital points are just above the base of the neck and just below the hairline or at the hairline on the back of the head. Again, the benefits of this type of work, this tractioning really helps to improve blood circulation. It lifts the metabolic rate, increases your metabolism. It also increases the production of certain hormones that help to repair injuries and regenerate tissue. And also working these points can be very helpful with tension headaches, migraines, or any sort of neck or head pain. Now with a trigger point, what makes it a trigger point is that when you push on it, that point often refers to an area around where the point is being accessed or it will send a sensation to a different place, a triggered place. So when you think of trigger points, think of a traveling sensation. So if you're working in the neck, and at the base of the head, and you experience a trigger point or a traveling, traveling sensation, once it's being accessed or touched or pushed on, that is a good indication that that is a very tight muscle. And that message you're receiving is telling you that other muscles are involved. So that's very good. So after doing a little deep work in the occiput, I'm gonna come back to addressing the lymph. So anytime you get a facial from an esthetician or a certified skin therapist, they're probably gonna talk about the lymph. And anytime you do lymph work, you still really wanna go towards the top of the head. And lymph work traditionally is very light in its pressure because the lymph sits as this almost superstitial fluid above the musculature and it also involves our lymph nodes. So doing lymph work in the neck helps improve circulation. It also helps improve tone and it helps our body process anything that you could be fighting or taking in. A lot of times if I feel a little cold coming on or a little something going on, maybe it's just neck tension or head pain. A lot of times when I feel any sort of neck pain or my immune system fighting, I will do neck and face massage to help increase circulation in that area. It also will help your lymph process out anything that it could be fighting. So I'm gonna turn her head and work a little more into the scalp. There are lots of trigger points in the scalp. And again, this will go back to our idea of massage being the fountain of youth for the face. Because when you have these really deep 
scalp muscles working all the time. And you don't even really know it, usually. And then you go in and you massage these muscles. It's like a facelift. Your scalp feels better, your hair feels different, your ears maybe are in a slightly different place, you hear differently. Having a lot of good circulation in the scalp, in the face, will in turn allow your muscles to feel more relaxed. There's this new kind of circulating energy that isn't just thinking or stressing. Working on the scalp, I really notice in clients, it helps them to drift and dream. Sometimes you'll even have people fall asleep. It's just one of those practices that is deeply relaxing for people. So if you can give someone 10 to 20 minutes of scalp, face, and neck massage, take a before and after picture and see which one looks younger. I think we should start doing this. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my fingers and I'm kind of making them real flat around the ear and I'm pushing down at probably a medium pressure. Is that too much pressure for you? Okay. So I do find that typically people like a good amount of pressure in their scalp. And you're getting these muscles around the temples. You're getting ocularis and temporalis, the, the muscles around the ears. And you're also getting that sound of what it sounds like to have your hair massaged around your ears, which is also very relaxing and allows you or your person to drift. I say you because I do a lot of these techniques on myself and after you practice these techniques for a while, you can really get relaxed even working on yourself. Even the sensation and sounds of working around the ears can be so relaxing. So I have Lucy again at center and you can always come back to just cradling the head and this doesn't have to be a super strong posture but just just holding holding your person's head will allow you to know if their neck is super relaxed or their head is super relaxed because if they're helping you at all and they're holding their head up that's not where you want them to be you want them to be effortless you want this massage especially a massage that's creating more circulation and youth in the face to feel very effortless, to feel like a break for them. So I'm just kind of rotating her neck to see what's there and she seems to have a very healthy spine. And I'm gonna work a few points in the face to continue to encourage some of the things we've been talking about, which is promoting lymph movement, increasing collagen production, increasing that sort of elasticity or bounce back in the skin. And I'm coming into her third eye area with my thumbs stacked, and then you can drag your thumbs down towards where the hair starts. And then I want you to take each of your thumbs on either side of the brow and then pull out, tractioning towards the temples. And repetition is super important and helpful for allowing a massage to be deeply relaxing. Some people might say, oh, that person just has a routine, I get really bored. But when it comes to the face and scalp, Repetition is key for them drifting away, which, is, which means you want them out of their mind. You want them using this time to just 
fully relax. You want it to be about nourishing the skin and body and not about them focusing on exactly what you're doing. So this is definitely a place in the body where I say, it's better if the person isn't falling along. It's okay if they fall asleep. You want this to be about rest because rest is the fountain of youth also. So I'm gonna go back in to a couple points just on either side of the nose and I'm just gonna press up. Almost everything I'm doing in this massage will be up towards the top of the head because you're encouraging new circulation and more circulation to happen in that direction to nourish the face and the skin. And then when you get to the jaw, I want you to spend a couple moments there doing, doing a few circular movements. And the reason why is because the jaw tends to hold on to stress more than other parts of the face. So you'll kind of notice when people tend to clench and working in the jaw will remind your person to let go of that joint. Because they can be relaxed in all other parts of their body, but then work for a few moments into the jaw and it, it reminds them, wow, that's like such a strong structure, how much we're chewing and thinking and talking and how much involvement goes into the control of this joint or having your mouth closed even. Even the encouragement of, you know, letting the teeth separate, letting the tongue relax. You can encourage them to have the tongue on the top of their mouth, just resting against their teeth. That will also help. And I'm gonna go back to our lymph again and just encourage some more circulation up towards the ear and the top of the head. side goes a long way. And then after I've worked on her scalp, I've worked on her forehead and face, I've worked around her ears, I've worked into her jaw, and then up the decollete, which is this area, I want to work on a few good meaty trigger points in the shoulders because most of us that feel stress hold tension in our shoulders and it's just a good way to end this massage by doing a little deeper work. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab onto her upper trapezius muscles with my fingers below and my thumb on top. And I'm working towards the corner of her shoulder and I want you to actually turn this palm up towards the ceiling, yeah. And this is encouraging her shoulders to move back a little bit, her chest open. And this side corner point is also super tender, tight in most people and can, and can cause headache referral. So this is a common trigger point for headaches. You don't have to have headaches for this trigger point to be helpful. Just encouraging length in this muscle will allow all the youth to come back to your neck and head and face and for your shoulder to feel better at the same time. And when working a trigger point, you want to hold, you want to hold that point in your hand and it will feel like 
a dense structure. And then as time goes by, maybe 10 seconds, maybe less, maybe more, depending on the person and the point, that area of tension will start to become more malleable, more movable. And it will allow her to have more length there. So I'm gonna to go to the other side and work that point as well. Good job putting your palm out. It's a good practice for anyone wanting to open their shoulders. So again, these face points all the points that I did throughout the massage improves tone in the face. The scalp points improve circulation around the brain and the skull structures, allowing your head to feel more relaxed. And then any of the lymph massage helps with elasticity in the tone in the face and neck and it boosts collagen. So cool. This work also increases your metabolism. If you're someone that works out a lot or works out some of the time but wants your metabolism happy. And working on this tension in the neck and head will also keep headaches away by keeping these muscles malleable and movable. So I'm going to close this massage by doing a few more points in the face. Again, I'm coming to the third eye and you can switch to one thumb and do spirals in and then go the other direction very helpful for deep thinkers people focusing this is also very helpful for the eyes the eyes strain a lot especially with so much going on in the world so much to see and then i'm gonna touch in on those points around the mandible and the jaw bones. And I'm going to bring back the lymph circulation. She's got a nice rosy glow to the places that I've worked. so happy you could join me today. I have a variety of other videos available on wellnessplus.tv or Amazon, and you can click the links below to check those out. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Hey, patrons, it's Karina and Missy. Hey patrons, this is Jess. Hey mom. <laughs> it is Greek Goddess Hour continued. And we are here with an exciting update for you. It's going to be more interactive, more communication, more connection, so that we can offer you more of what you want to see. That's like the most frustrating thing. And you're like, God, this video is going so great. And then the camera dies.
Alright, patrons, so I just want to show y'all how respected here. Alright, let's do your city. You're choosing us over Netflix, or right. I wouldn't even choose us over Netflix. No, that's not true. <laughs> Feeling pretty good. And what we want to do is become more connected with you. So thank you so so much.